What's up guys, welcome back to Sugar High. In today's video, we're talking about the new features that set the Dexcom G7 apart from the older G6 model. If you're new to Sugar High, welcome. I'm PA David and I'm a board certified and licensed PA that specializes in diabetes and endocrine care in Southern California. And Sugar High is all about real life, easy to understand information to equip you to better manage diabetes. Diabetes is a tough disease to manage and there are lots of daily inconveniences, not the least of which is monitoring your blood sugar by poking your finger. So I love talking about any new advances in diabetes technology that can take some of that burden off my patients and your shoulders. Continuous glucose monitors are really on their way toward becoming the new standard, more or less replacing the old fashioned finger stick meters and Dexcom is one of the top two products out there right now. The Dexcom G6 became available in 2018 and is not only still available, but still widely used by thousands of patients every day. Like any tech product, each new model makes several improvements over the old ones, and the Dexcom G7, which dropped in early 2023, does exactly that. So let's talk about 10 big differences between the Dexcom G6 and G7 on this episode of Sugar High. Okay, before we get started, I wanna point out that this video is just me talking to you. This is not sponsored by Dexcom or in any way connected with them. I mean, I don't know why I see all these YouTube channels getting paid by sponsors and I'm just... So anyway, I'm not getting paid to present this information and I just thought it was worth talking about because a lot of my patients have asked me about this and I figure if my patients have these questions, you guys probably have these questions too. Now, I will admit that Dexcom does provide like these free samples to just about any medical office that wants to offer them to their patients, my office included, so I'm gonna use a couple for the educational demonstrations here, but otherwise, Dexcom is not involved in the making of this video at all. By the way, if you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that little like button since that will help this information to get seen by as many patients as possible. And if you'd like to see more diabetes videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell as well. All right, let's go. Big difference number one, and the most obvious, is the size. The G7 sensor is like 60% smaller than the G6. The G6 sensor is a longer, sort of rounded rectangle shape that's almost two inches long and over an inch wide. The G7 sensor is much smaller and like well, just about one inch by one inch and not perfectly round, but definitely a more rounded shape. The thickness of the sensor or how tall it stands from your skin was also reduced by over half, dropping from a little over half an inch on the G6 to less than a quarter of an inch on the G7. That smaller form factor comes with the hope of being like less intrusive during day-to-day -day use and hopefully with less likelihood of being bumped off before it's 10 days are up. So far, my patients love this change because if you're gonna have something stuck to your skin, bigger is not better. Difference number two is that they've eliminated the separate transmitter. In the G6, the glucose sensor lasts like 10 days, but all the processing power, the Bluetooth and the batteries are in this separate transmitter. At the end of a sensor's life cycle, you peel the whole thing off and before you throw it away, you need to pull out the transmitter and reusing it by inserting it into the next sensor. These transmitters last about three months, so you only get like four of them over the course of a year. So if you lose your last one and you don't have a spare, it doesn't matter how many of these sensors you've got left, you're toast. Well, with the G7, this is now gone. Actually, it's not though. It's all still here. All the electronics are built in right into each sensor so that it's just one single item all together in one. At the end of every 10 days, you just peel this off, toss it, and without any individual parts that need to be reused. Big thing number three is that the required warm-up time on the G7 has been dropped to only 30 minutes instead of the two hours needed for the Dexcom G6. This is a big deal. When you get used to being able to see your sugar number anytime you want, those two hours at the beginning of a new sensor where you're suddenly blocked out can be a real bummer. So while warm-up periods are gonna be necessary for any continuous glucose monitor, 
30 minutes gives the G7 the shortest warm-up time of any CGM currently out there. And the other cool thing is that the clock starts ticking as soon as you apply the sensor, not when you activate it. So by the time you get the sensor ID number like put into your phone or the reader device, you may already be down to like 25 minutes or so remaining before you can use it. On the topic of changing out sensors, big difference number four is that the G7 has a 12 hour grace period at the end of a completed sensor. With the G6, you get 10 days, like exactly 10 days. So if you start a sensor at say 11 a.m., 10 days later at exactly 11 a.m., it's like, okay, my time's up. We're pretty much done here and you have a nice life and you've got nothing until you start a new sensor and it finishes warming up two hours later. Well, at the end of a G7's 10 day life cycle, you'll get a notification that basically says, oh, um, so my shift is over, uh, but I'm gonna stick around like an extra 12 hours for you just in case you don't have an extra sensor handy or like if you need to get home or somewhere else where you can put my replacement on, but I'm still here for you, okay? then you can still get the full functionality in the meantime. One of the really cool things about this grace period is that it allows for a little bit of overlap between where the old sensor finishes and the new sensor starts up. So if you put on a new sensor during that grace period, you can allow that 30 minute warm up period to go by while you're still relying on the previous sensor. And that way you can switch over to the new sensor as soon as it's ready without any kind of gaps or downtime in between. All right, next up is sensor location. Change number five is that the G7 is FDA approved to be used on the back of the arm. The G6 was specifically approved to be used on the abdomen, but it seems like the more these glucose sensors get studied, the more they find that the back of the arm seems to offer a little bit more accuracy. Now, does that mean that it will only work on the back of the arm? No, if you follow anybody uh, with diabetes on Instagram or YouTube, especially channels about folks living with type one diabetes, you'll see that people put these things all over their bodies and they get really creative with changing up the locations. Now that's all off label, but theoretically it could still work. The official position of Dexcom is that it should only be used on the back of the arm because that's where they applied it during the clinical trials which means that that's what the FDA is gonna say is approved for use. If you put it somewhere else and then you get inaccurate results, they're gonna be like, hey, not our fault. We told you to put it on the arm, but obviously people put it lots of different places and generally it works really well. That being said, I'd love to know what your experiences have been. If you've used the Dexcom G6 or G7 and you've used it in other places besides the areas that are like technically approved, Tell us about it in the comment section about how that went. Did it all work the same for you or did you find that like one particular part of your body worked better or worse than another? On the topic of accuracy, item number six is that the G7 is about 10% more accurate than the G6. Now, there is no glucose meter in the world, whether it's finger stick or continuous glucose monitor, that's 100% accurate there's always gonna be a little bit of a margin of error there because these things aren't perfect. The absolute most accurate way to check your blood sugar is to draw it out of a vein and test it on a machine in a laboratory. But those machines cost tens of thousands of dollars. So obviously people aren't gonna have like a reference laboratory machine in their house. So these things are the best that we can do in terms of balance between accuracy, portability, and affordability. So, when we talk about the accuracy of a meter or a sensor, there's a few different ways of describing that accuracy. And I don't wanna get into all the math and the statistics and stuff like that, but if you read the specs on these things, you'll see a word called MARD, okay? MARD stands for Mean Absolute Relative Difference. And I don't wanna bog this video down by going into all the insane stupid details of how it's calculated. I don't think that's why you came here. But if I were to summarize it, it's basically the average difference between what this thing says your blood sugar is and what a laboratory would say your blood sugar is if they had like an actual blood sample drawn. The smaller the number, the smaller the difference between the two. So a smaller MARD number equals more accurate. Does that make sense? Okay. The G6 has a MARD of 9%. 
and the G7 managed to drop that down to 8.2. So while that's not a huge difference in the number, if you consider the actual difference, you are looking at about a 10 to 12% improvement in the accuracy between the G6 and the G7. Bottom line is that most of these sensors are pretty good in terms of the accuracy. And if, if you're trying to interpret the overall glucose trend, which is really what they're for, it is very doable. But if you've ever used a continuous glucose monitor before, I'd be willing to bet that you've probably had moments where there's a pretty noticeable difference between what your sensor says and what your sugar is when you actually check it with a finger stick. And if that's happened to you, tell me about it in the comments. I know those times can be really frustrating, but hopefully that should happen a bit less with the G7. Moving on, number seven is that the G7 has a totally different cell phone app than the G6. You would think that there would be just like one Dexcom app that could run all the different sensors, but it seems like every time these diabetes tech companies make a new updated model, the FDA requires them to develop a whole new app for it. I think the idea is that the FDA wants to evaluate the app completely, like to make sure that it works safely enough and decide if they're gonna approve it like on its face as opposed to just incremental updates. And this is true not only for Dexcom, but also for Freestyle when they went from the Libre 2 to the Libre 3, totally different app. So if you're currently using the Dexcom G6 on your phone and you wanna upgrade to the G7, just be aware that you're gonna to have to go to that app store or your Google Play store and download a fresh and separate app in order to run the device. It's pretty clearly labeled, and if you just type in Dexcom G7, it comes up right away. All that being said, not everyone uses their cell phone to operate their CGM device. Both the G6 and the G7 have standalone reader device options, which kind of look like small cell phones, that can independently operate the Dexcom and display your glucose value. But in the same way that the G6 app on the phone does not operate the G7, your old G6 device is not going to work with the G7 sensor either. The good news though, is that they really upgraded the reader device on the G7, at least in my opinion, compared to the G6. This thing is smaller, lighter, and more functional than the device that comes with the G6. The display menu is basically the same thing that you would see if you were using the app on your cell phone. I'm not gonna go through an entire tutorial or demonstration of how the app or menu navigation works on the reader device in this video. I mean, my videos tend to be too long as it is, but if you think that that would be helpful, let me know in the comments, and if it looks like there's enough need out there, I'll make a step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to start this thing up and run it for everyday use. The one thing that I will point out though, and maybe this should be like item 8.1, is that there's a really cool improvement that they added to both the app and the reader device with the G7 that's not there for the G6. These things now give a glimpse into Dexcom's interpretation program called Clarity, which gives you this high level overview analysis of your glucose. The full glory of Clarity is still available as a separate yet integrated website or a phone app, but with the G7 reader, you can still get some of that information just by looking at the screen without like plugging it into a computer. This can be really helpful for you to see how your glucose is doing for like seven or 14 or 28 days at a time and during your visit with your healthcare provider. If your diabetes care provider doesn't have the infrastructure in place to download your sensor and get into the real like nitty gritty of clarity, you can just pull this up and show it to them and they can look at it and get a decent idea of what sorts of needs you might have in terms of medication adjustments or other areas for improvement. All right, we are working our way right through. Number nine is that Dexcom G7 comes with an included overlay patch in every box. As much as my patients love their continuous glucose monitor, probably the most common complaint that I hear is that these things just fall off sometimes, no matter what the brand is. But in order to keep that from happening as much, a lot of people will buy aftermarket overlay patches like Tegaderm or other adhesive patches that are specifically made to keep these things from losing their adhesion and falling off before the replacement date. Well, Dexcom apparently decided that they're just gonna own the fact that this is a potential problem that can happen, so they included that overlay patch for you. 
That way you can put that sucker on if you want to give it a little bit extra hold just to reduce the likelihood of the adhesive peeling up early or the sensor getting accidentally knocked off. That's a nice little bonus. Okay, number 10 is just sort of a temporary difference between the G7 and the G6, depending on when you're watching this video. Eventually, this is no longer going to be a true fact, and it also may not be true at different times in different countries outside the US. So depending on where you are or when you're watching this, do a little check before you just take this next little bit of information as fact, okay? But a lot of people, like for example, many people with type 1 diabetes, use insulin pumps instead of injections. And most of those pumps now integrate with continuous glucose monitors using real modern algorithms that can calculate automatic insulin adjustment so that your dose can change as the needs change and improve your glucose control. The G6 has already been approved and implemented with some of the more commonly used insulin pump products like the Tandem X2 and the Omnipod 5. The Medtronic pump never worked with Dexcom or Freestyle because they make their own glucose sensor and they're obviously not gonna wanna share their business with other companies. Even though the technology was built into the G7 for it to work with those insulin pumps, the actual integration first has to be tested and then submitted to the FDA or European regulatory agencies for approval. So it takes a long time for that implementation to actually go live. Up until recently, if you wanted to use a continuous glucose monitor fully integrated with your insulin pump, you had to stay with the G6 because that connection with the G7 hadn't been activated yet. Well, in December 2023, the Tandem Insulin Pump did go live and you can now happily use your G7 as your CGM with full insulin pump integration. And that's true for both the Tandem X2, which has been out for several years, and the recently released Mobi Insulin Pump. As of the date of this video, which is March 2024, Omnipod hasn't quite come online for G7 integration yet. It's coming, and soon, probably in early summer. But at least today, in early 2024, at my house in California, it's not live yet. Watch, with my luck, I'll post this video and then Omnipod will announce the next day that it's gone live. The G7 is already integrated with the Beta Bionics Islet insulin pump. And by the way, I don't mean to minimize the significance of the Islet insulin pump by just sort of tacking it on here at the end. It's just that it's still a relatively new product and most people using insulin pumps, at least here in the United States, are using either a Medtronic, an Omnipod, or a Tandem. But if you use an insulin pump, do yourself a favor and go check out some videos on the Islet pump because holy moly, it's got some really cool advancements that simplify insulin use more than ever before, particularly in type 1 diabetes. Not going to go off on tangents right now, but I am really excited to make a video on that product and talk to you guys more about it in detail. Stay tuned for that. All right, so that is your list of top 10 big differences between the Dexcom G6 and the Dexcom G7. Just to wrap it up, let's briefly talk about what hasn't changed. The Dexcom G7 still has a 10-day wear period, just like the G6. There is a Dexcom product that just got approved that's gonna last 14 or 15 days, so who knows what'll change in the future, but at least right now, every 10 days, you'll need to plan on replacing your G7 sensor just like you would with the G6. The Bluetooth range is exactly the same between the G6 and the G7. In real life, you could probably get away with a little bit more distance, but it's rated for a 20 foot range. That means if your body is within 20 feet or six meters of the device, you should be able to get a reliable signal without your G7 sensor losing its connection. That was true for the G6, and it remains the same in the G7. Lastly, just like the G6, the Dexcom G7 does not need to be calibrated, but there is still the option to calibrate it if you believe that it's necessary. We talked earlier about there sometimes being a difference between what your CGM says your sugar is and what it actually is when you check it with a finger stick. Both the app and the standalone reader device have an option where you can enter your measured blood glucose level as a calibrating number. So if you do happen to notice a big discrepancy and you want to set the sucker straight, you're not required to do it with any frequency like you would have to if you were using like the older Medtronic sensor, but 
you can do it if you want with the G6 or with the G7. All right, guys, thanks for watching this roundup of differences and a few similarities between the Dexcom G6 and the Dexcom G7. Like I said earlier, I'd love to hear all about your experiences with the G7 or the G6 in the comment section below. Other people do read your comments as well, and you might be surprised at how much help you may be offering somebody else by talking about what you've experienced yourself and offering any tips that you might have picked up along the way. As always, don't forget to help me out by hitting that like button so that this information will be visible to more people and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you'll be the first to know every time I post a new Sugar High video. Again, thank you guys for letting me be part of your diabetes journey and I look forward to talking to you again in the next video. Thank you.